yeah good morning everyone of you <clears throat> so um, almost this unit has been completed and last two topics couple of topics which are left so uh, the topics which are left is nuclear propulsion system a small topic then last one is high energy chemicals so today we will try to see this both of the topics yeah this is a nuclear propulsion system as the name indicates so various propulsion systems or energy systems we have seen earlier we have classified various energy systems okay here okay nuclear uh, pro uh, propulsion system or chemical energy system free radical arc jet magneto hydrodynamic plasma all these are the energy systems we have seen out of this the main topic which we have covered in the previous classes chemical energy system so this one so then we will see a small topic which is nuclear fission uh, or nuclear energy system okay nuclear propulsion system in this one a large interplanetary rockets are designed with the nuclear power plant so with the technology same used in the nuclear power plant this large uh, rockets will be designed and a hydrogen as a propulsion fluid here the hydrogen will be a propellant because of its very low molecular weight compared to the other propellants because of its low molecular weight it will be equipped as a it will be used as a propellant here okay it will be stored inside some tank so the working fluid is pumped as a liquid from the storage tank so this is a hydrogen storage tank using a pumps it will be pumped to the uh, uh, inside the reactor nuclear reactor where the hydrogen temperature here in this reactor the temperature will be nearly uh, 3300 okay 3300 degree centigrade it will attain so that much high temperature will be attained so after burning that one a supersonic okay you have seen the mach number greater than 1 supersonic mach number less than 1 subsonic mach number is equal to 1 you might have seen in the fluid mechanics course okay mach number so depending on that one we will uh, we will divide the flows into three types one is uh, subsonic supersonic or normal or sonic flow okay sub supersonic or sonic flow okay depending on the mach number so highly it will be expanded from this nozzle and it will due to uh, at a supersonic region and due to this a maximum amount of thrust will be coming so thrust is nothing but uh, isp this specific impulse is a measure of that thrust isp is equal to f by dw by dt we have seen that one so nearly for this type of nuclear propulsion system the isp the specific impulse will be as high as 1500 seconds okay much higher than compared to the chemical energy system this one but there is a disadvantage in this type of system why because so hydrogen uh, we know that this is one type of cryogenic fluid so hydrogen diffuses into the lattice structure okay inside this lattice structure means whenever if the storage tank or in the reactor whatever it may be so that construction material needs to be strong enough otherwise this hydrogen molecules will be completely impinging into the uh, surface of this uh, reactor or internal structure of the reactor will be attacked okay that is called as a hydrogen embrittlement so it will cause a hydrogen embrittlement so it will attack a grain structure of your uh, construction uh, material okay whenever this hydrogen attacks the grain structure of your construction material so it will cause a sudden failure Okay, that material will be causing a sudden failure at the temperatures as high as the 3300 degree centigrade so the construction material needs to be strong enough so that it will be supportive for that particular nuclear propulsion system so this is the only disadvantage in the uh, nuclear propulsion system so though it is having a high specific impulse compared to the chemical energy system but due to this advantage a careful consideration of design principles needs to be adopted here otherwise hydro hydrogen will be getting inside of the construction material and after getting inside of the construction material it will directly attack the grain boundary okay directly attack the grain boundary of that particular construction material and it will cause a creep or it will cause a embrittlement suddenly failure can be happening okay uh, is that okay any doubts Clear. No sir. No sir. Okay, then next topic and the last topic of this unit is 
hydro uh, high energy chemicals what are the high energy chemicals why we are calling this as a high energy chemicals so these chemicals or compounds are nothing but when they are combusting okay when they are subjected to combustion reactions they will release large amount of energy due to their exothermic reaction due to the reaction which is carrying out inside is a exothermic reaction so what are the high energy chemicals high energy chemicals are nothing but chemicals or compound which on combustion gives large amount of energy due to its exothermic reaction so what are the examples of this high energy chemicals one is a hydrazine n2h4 then next one is a boranes boranes are nothing but boron and hydrogen compounds are called as boranes like uh, this diborane pentaborane decaborane this all these are the boranes uh, examples these are the explosives only but they are classified under high energy chemicals so high energy chemicals are nothing but when they are combusted these chemicals so uh, these compounds when they are combusted they will release a large amount of energy due to their exothermic reaction which is happening inside this uh, particular high energy chemicals so what are the various methods to prepare this uh, high energy chemicals so first one we will see hydrazine okay hydrazine so first is hydrazine production so what are the methods which are available to pro produce the hydrazine there are three methods are there to produce hydrazine one is a ammonia sodium hypochlorite method so this is called ammonia sodium hypochlorite method then next one is a urea sodium hypochlorite method and third one is a nhd ammonia decomposition by nuclear fission reaction okay there are three methods to produce hydrazine one is a ammonia hypochlorite uh, hypochlorite method then next one is a ammonia uh, urea hypochlorite method and third one is a nhd decomposition by um, ammonia decomposition by nuclear fission reaction so largely this hydrazine will be product, uh, produced using ammonia hypochlorite method first method so uh, to produce the ammonia uh, this hydrazine using the second method which is urea hypochlorite method or sodium hypochlorite method so um, uh, urea needs to be uh, the very high production of urea uh, needs to be there so urea is used in agriculture purpose also so there should, there should be some surplus amount of production of urea then only this route is possible otherwise the next possible route is ammonia decomposition by nuclear fission reaction there is no commercial plant which is available to produce a hydrazine using this third method which is uh, ammonia decomposition by nuclear fission reaction so whenever there is a surplus amount of uh, maximum capacity or excess capacity of urea production is there because that is used for agriculture purpose also we cannot use for the energy production okay agriculture purpose also urea is used if there is a surplus amount or if there is a excess amount if excess capacity of urea production is there then only the second production second method is feasible okay the third method is not at commercialized there is no commercial availability of nhd decomposition by nuclear fission reaction okay so we have to go for the first method so which is nh3 or ammonia sodium hypochlorite method so now we will see in detail what is this method ammonia sodium chloride method there are three methods to produce hydrazine one is ammonia sodium hypochlorite method then second one is urea sodium hypochlorite method and third one is ammonia decomposition by nuclear fission reaction so third method is not at commercialized no commercial plant is available to use the second method there needs to be certain uh, excess production or excess capacity production of this urea needs to be there why because urea is used for agriculture purpose also then uh, because of this two disadvantages using these two methods so we will go for first method which is ammonia sodium hypochlorite method so now in detail we will see the sodium uh, ammonia sodium hypochlorite method so what are the raw materials which are required uh, to manufacture the hydrazine using the first method which is ammonia sodium hypochlorite method so the raw materials are this one nh3 ammonia is needed and naoh to uh, produce sodium hypochlorite we need a basic raw material as sodium hydroxide naoh or caustic is needed then chlorine is needed cl2 then gelatin or glue as a inhibitor because there is a side reaction in the hydrazine production there is a side reaction in order to suppress this side reaction we need some inhibitor like glue or gelatin so there are four raw materials to manufacture a hydrazine using ammonia sodium hypochlorite method that are first one is ammonia second one is a caustic and then third one is a chlorine and to suppress a side reaction we need a inhibitor called 
glue, glue or gelatin. So these are the raw materials which are used. So what are the uses of this uh, hydrazine? Why we have to produce hydrazine? Why? Because it is used as a rocket fuel. Okay, it is used as a rocket fuel for the military purposes and everything. We can use this as a rocket fuel. Then next one is as an antioxidant. As an antioxidant also, this high energy chemical which is hydrazine is used. And plant growth retardant to retard the growth of a plant, we can use this hydrazine. Then a various drug manufacturing also, this hydrazine is having applicability. These are the popular uses for hydrazine. Then what is the reactions? These are the reactions, five different reactions which is taking place inside the uh, flow sheet. So what are the reactions? How the reactions will be taking place? This is the detailed flow sheet. Okay, detailed flow sheet for the production of hydrazine by ammonia sodium hypochlorite process. Only one uh, method is there that is ammonia sodium hypochlorite method. You need not to bother about remaining these two methods. Why? Because they are not commercialized and this is no surplus amount of urea is available. That's why we are not going to study in detail about two, three methods. Only first method we are going to study in detail. Okay, now we will see in detail what is that flow sheet, how this is going to happen uh, in the one note itself. Okay, is that clear until here or any doubts? Shall I proceed? Okay, this raw materials, everything. Yes, okay. Then see what is happening inside this ammonia sodium hypochlorite method. Ammonia, uh, this method is called ammonia sodium hypochlorite method. Sodium hypochlorite. method ammonia sodium hypochlorite method so as shown in this one the first reactor is so the first reactor it is a chlorination reaction okay reactor is a chlorinator chlorination unit which will be happening at 20 to 30 degree centigrade why we have to uh, manufacture this as 20 to 30 degree centigrade because the first reaction is a caustic chlorination what is a caustic soda can anybody tell caustic chlorination so this caustic chlorination is carried out uh, um, as per the reaction so caustic soda what is a caustic soda na oh is called as a caustic soda or sodium hydroxide so this is some reaction a let us say so two molecules of caustic soda will be reacted with chlorine okay cl2 so that is called caustic chlorination so caustic chlorination will be carried out in a chlorination unit at 20 to 30 degrees centigrade then what is the product which is formed na o cl plus sodium chloride plus water will be formed so this nao cl is called as a sodium hypochlorite hypochlorite then this is sodium chloride. So the first reaction will be carried out in a uh, caustic chlorination unit. This is chlorination unit, which will be carried out at 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. Why this temperature we have to adopt means greater than 30 degrees centigrade. This sodium hypochlorite will be uh, just decomposing. <clears throat> to lower the decomposition of this sodium hypochlorite, NaOCl, we need to adopt this uh, uh, temperature conditions 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. So the first reaction, two molecules of caustic will be uh, reacted with chlorine and it will be forming a sodium hypochlorite plus one molecule of sodium chloride plus one molecule of water. In this sodium hypochlorite is our uh, main ingredients which we will be employing in ammonia sodium hypochlorite manufacturing method for hydrazine. Then why we have to use 20 to 30 degrees centigrade range means if the temperature is more than 30 degrees centigrade, there will be a decomposition of sodium hypochlorite. That's why the reaction has to be carried out or chlorination unit has to be maintained at 30 degrees centigrade or below 30 degrees centigrade in between 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. So ammonia is going from here and the caustic is entering from the top. 
so both will be just going into the chlorination and that chlorination will be uh, after that the product which is sodium hypochlorite will be sent here the nacl so this is by product the nacl will be sent here the brain chiller to the brain chiller so brain solution nacl is called as a brain solution bri brain solution so brain solution is recycled back okay so this is the first reaction which is carrying out there then next is a after forming this sodium hypochlorite so here it will go to naocl reactor which is called sodium hypochlorite reactor in this the reaction next reaction will takes place so here from here anhydrous nh3 will be coming so anhydrous nh3 means can anybody say what is the definition of anhydrous what is the meaning of anhydrous anhydrous means aqueous and anhydrous so aqueous means which is containing water anhydrous means there is no water contained in this one so ammonia anhydrous ammonia will be going to the nocl reactor as well as n2h4 reactor which is hydrazine reactor so first this anhydrous nh3 will be entering here together with a water here so it will be uh, coming as a aqueous nh3 so why because we are just Uh, dissolving some amount of water into this anhydrous NH3, so that is called as aqueous NH3. So NH3 will be reacted with sodium hypochlorite, this one NaOCl, and it will gives you NH2Cl, which is called as a chloramine plus NaOH. So this NH2Cl is called as a monochloramine or chloramine we can call mono chloramine or simply we can call chloramine chloramine so chloramine will be formed in na naocl reactor or sodium hypochlorite reactor by reacting with ammonia and sodium hypochlorite which is formed in the first reaction so this is the second reaction b reaction will be formed in this reactor naocl reactor then after that whatever this uh, monochloride or mono uh, chloramine or chloramine which is formed is will be sent to the hydrazine reactor so this one n2h4 reactor this is called hydrazine reactor and a third reaction which is called as reaction c okay reaction c will be carried out in which a chloramine nh2cl which is formed in this reaction b will be reacted with further with the ammonia why ammonia once again so this anhydrous ammonia is once again going to this reactor as well as this reactor naocl reactor also it is going as well as nh n2h4 reactor also it is going so it will react with one molecule of nh3 and it will gives rise to uh, this one n2h4 which is called hydrazine this is hydrazine so with the release of one molecule of hydrochloric acid so this is called hydrazine this is um, hydrochloric acid okay hydrochloric acid so the whatever the mono uh, monochloramine which is formed which will be once again reacted to ammonia and it will gives you a product n2h4 which is called hydrazine plus one molecule of hydrochloric acid will be liberated here so here that will be formed in the n2h4 reactor then after that one this product will be sent to the a series of nh3 recovery unit whatever the unconverted ammonia is there or unused ammonia is there which will be reacted in this two towers this tower and this tower it will be reacted so this is called as a nh3 recovery uh, columns nh3 recovery columns then afterwards after recovering this nh3 this nh3 will be sent to this as a recycle once again to the Um, um storage tank nh3 storage tank this recycle nh3 will be mixed with some makeup nh3 then it will be sent once again to the NO, naocl reactor as well as n2h4 reactor so this is what happening until here so after that one whatever the product which is formed okay after recovering this uh, nh uh, ammonia whatever the product which is formed which will be sent to the crystallization uh, evaporator crystallization evaporator so in this one uh, in this uh, uh, gelatin or glue as a inhibitor will be added to this naocl reactor here gelatin 
or glue will be added in order to suppress the side reaction reactor reaction e we will call so the reaction e is nothing but uh, this one 2 nh 2 cl plus react with n2h4 it will give rise to 2 nh4 cl plus n2 so where this we already know nh2cl is nothing but monochloramine or chloramine then this is hydrazine this is chloramine so chloramine which is formed here as well as the hydrazine which is formed in the reaction b and c they both will be reacted with each other and they will be forming ammonium chloride so which is a side product or which is a um, uh, negative product okay side product we will call ammonium chloride so in order to suppress this reaction we will be adding some amount of glue or gelatin glue or gelatin to this naocl reactor then after adding this one this will be acting as a gelatin or glue will be acting as a inhibitor therefore they will suppress the reaction last reaction which is this side reaction this is called side reaction so unwanted reaction this is okay after suppressing that reaction whatever the products formed from that one nh3 will be stripped out in a nh3 recovery column and this uh, recycled nh3 will be recycled back to the nh3 storage along with the makeup once again it will be sent as a reactant to the naocl reactor as well as hydrazine reactor then whatever the products are formed it will be sent to the crystallizer evaporator so crystallization uh, evaporator in this one uh, the reaction is neutralization reaction will be taking place reaction d is neutralization reaction so here a base is formed okay here base is formed this one naoh and here in this reaction c acid is formed hcl and in reaction b a base is formed this is base and this is acid so they both will combined with each other and form a neutralizing salt okay they both will be combined to form a neutralization salt which is naoh from this reaction b and hcl from this reaction c will be reacted and therefore they will form as a salt that is nacl plus h2o water so this is called neutralization reaction zation reaction okay after recovering nh3 from this unit after recovering nh3 from this unit nh3 will be recycled back and the product nacl plus whatever the by products which is formed base plus this acid will be reacted with each other and a neutralizing salt will be formed there then here the salt will be converted to the crystals okay crystallization salts okay that uh, crystals will be separated using this centrifuge the salts will be separated as a crystals in this centrifuge and a mother liquid will be once again recycled back to the crystallization evaporator then the top product which is majorly containing nh uh, hydrazine okay which is majorly containing hydrazine nearly 65 percentage will be hydrazine n2h4 will be there so this top product will be sent to the hydrate column so anhydrous this is called anhydrous why because only 60 percent is there rest uh, uh, what we say this 35 percentage will be in a anhydrous form which is water form then it will be sent to this uh, hydrate reactor uh, hydrate column we will say then after that one uh, the as much as possible hydrate will be hydro, uh, water will be separated out then after separating this one this 65 percentage hydrazine whatever is there it will be forming a azeotrope okay a constant boiling azeotrope with water so water and this hydrazine will be forming a azeotrope also what is this azeotrope azeotrope is nothing but so whenever this composition has been met 35 percentage and 65 percentage is met if you this composition mixture whenever you are sending to some distillation column so distillation column when you send this one so whatever the top composition is there okay that is same as the bottom composition but ideally what what is the use of distillation hydrazine has to be separated as a top product and water will or h2o will be separated as a top product or hydrazine needs to be separated as a bottom product but it will not separate regardless of how much energy you apply so that this azeotropic mixture needs 
certain other azeotropic column so in which a aniline a third component that is called as a extractive distillation so here extractive distillation is used or azeotropic distillation so in which aniline as a third component will be formed and this aniline will form a azeotrope or mixed with this water and therefore water plus aniline will be separated as a top product and the, uh, it will be sent to the decanter therefore aniline is once again recycled back to the azeotropic column and water will be stripped off then the bottom product okay will be sent to the purification unit and nearly 98 percentage n2h4 okay the after purification a nearly purified product will be formed so after azeotropic distillation this column the hydrazine will be around uh, some 85 to 90 percentage hydrazine will be there so after passing through this uh, distillation column or purification column the hydrazine will be somewhat pure which is 98 percent greater than 98 percentage hydrazine you will encounter okay greater than 98 percentage hydrazine will be encountered so once again i am repeating this one so in between this one okay whenever the temperatures are greater than uh, 30 degree centigrade or whenever you uh, doesn't inhibit any reaction one another side reaction will also be formed that is hydrazine decomposition reaction n2h4 uh, will be uh, what we said decomposed into nitrogen plus hydrogen okay this is also unwanted reaction why because we want hydrazine as our product this is a product okay this two are the decomposition reaction so we don't want this side reactions okay once again i am repeating first one is uh, in, in a flow sheet i am showing that one so first one is this one sodium uh, this chlorination unit will be there in which caustic will be reacted with a caustic means naoh will be reacted with chlorine and it will be forming sodium hypochlorite plus na nacl which is brine chill brine solution then sodium hypochlorite will be sent to the naocl reactor in which an anhydrous ammonia will be coming from one stream and water will be flowing as a other stream then they both will be mixed with each other and they will be called as a aqueous ammonia then aqueous ammonia will be reacted with a naoc naocl which is sodium hypochlorite formed in the chlorination unit and NH3 plus NaOCl will gives rise to uh, your so uh, mono chloramine then this chloramine which is formed in this uh, second reaction that chloramine will be reacted with the further ammonia aqueous ammonia and it will give you a hydrazine so here the uh, brine uh, what this NaOH will be formed once again and here the HCl will be formed this both will be combined with each, each other and a neutralization reaction will be carried out that is NaOH plus NaCl gives rise to NaC uh, NaOH plus HCl gives rise to NaCl plus um, this H2O water. Then, in order to recover the unconverted NH3, a series of two distillation columns or recovery columns will be arranged. After recovering ammonia, this ammonia will be once again recycled back to the ammonia storage tank along with the makeup NH3. It will be sent to the NaOCl reactor or NH N2H2 reactor. so this n2h2 reactor needs to be maintained at 130 degree centigrade okay then after recovering ammonia the bottom product which is there which will be sent to this crystallization unit in which the salt which is formed neutralization salt will be recovered as a in a crystallization evaporator then it will be centrifuged and a mother liquor will be once again recycled back to the evaporation unit then the uh, top product which is preferentially containing hydrazine will be sent to the hydrate column in which some part of hydro, uh, water will be removed and a 60 percentage hydrazine will be encountered then this 60 percentage encounter which is there uh, in a azeotropic form with water will be separated using a azeotropic column in which a third component in a extractive distillation we needs to use a third component that is aniline will be used as a third component so aniline will be supplied here then aniline will form a azeotrope with water or aniline will dissolve uh, the water which is there uh, with the hydrazine then aniline plus water will be uh, collected as a top product and it will be sent to the decanter where the aniline will be separated and sent to once again to the azeotropic column and water will be stripped off then the bottom product of this azeotropic column is a hydrazine around 85 to 90 percentage hydrazine will be there further that 85 to 90 percentage hydrazine will be subjected to further purification and after purification you will be encountering greater than 98 percentage hydrazine 
Okay, any doubts? No, no sir. sir. Okay, then uh, yeah, hydrazine production is okay. I hope everybody uh, understood this one. So then the major engineering problems. What are the major engineering problems which are encountering in this particular flow sheet? So in this particular flow sheet, so here if you see this uh, NaOCl or chlorine which is used or chlorinated products, all the chlorinated products like uh, uh, monochloramine or chloramine or dichloramine, okay, uh, this ammonia chloride and hydrazine, all these are the corrosives, okay, they are very much corrosive. So the construction material, this NaOCl plus this N2H2 reactor and this chlorine units needs to be constructed with a rubber steel uh, reactor. So construction material, so the first one major engineering problem is a construction material, material of construction. So because the NaOCl, N2H2 and chlorination, all these are the corrosive uh, molecules. So because they are corrosive, we need to construct this chlorination unit, NaOCl reactor and N2H4 reactor using some high quality steel. That is stainless steel of three, SS304, which is a uh, name, okay, which is a, a trade name of that particular stainless steel. With a rubber lining only, we can use this one. So high quality stainless steel needs to be used in this three units along with a uh, SS304 and rubber line, it needs to be there. And rest of this, all these units needs to be constructed. Normal steel is enough to construct that material. But this, uh, these three reactors, this uh, chlorination unit as well as these two reactors needs to be constructed using a high quality stainless steel, which is SS304 with a rubber lining. Then only a corrosion, okay, the material damage can be minimized. Okay, this one, uh, the re recovery, rest of these units, the recovery units or purification units and everything can be constructed using a normal stainless a normal steel also it is okay then dehydration method so here if you see the next uh, next one is a dehydration method so what is dehydration method here water plus hydrazine is coming so the rest of these three columns is nothing but stripping of water from that hydrazine purification of water so to purify this water there are three methods one method is extractive distillation using ammonia. Then next method is extractive distillation using ethylene glycol. And third method is distillation over NaOH at low pressures. Okay, these are the three methods which are available to strip off water from that particular hydrazine. But however, the operating cost, however, sorry, this, the, however, the operating cost of recovering this ethylene, uh, ethylene glycol as well as heat requirement and loss of ethylene glycol will be very high using this particular method. But here maintaining low pressures or sub-atmospheric pressure is very difficult. And also it is very dangerous to go for the low atmospheric pressure. Why? Because uh, there is a dehydration as well as explosion problems are there. Okay. Uh, whenever you are going to the sub-atmospheric pressure. But why? Because it will reduce the boiling points of some of the components or explosive components. So we have to use the first method which is called as extractive distillation using aniline. So in the flow sheet also they have shown us this extractive distillation using aniline only they have shown us. But this alternatively we can also use these two methods also. But the first method will cost much, uh, very much high, operating cost will be very high because heat and glycerol recovery, uh, glycol recovery or glycol losses will be very high in this first uh, alternative. And in the second alternative, maintaining the sub-atmospheric pressure or low pressures, okay, uh, there will be a caustic dehydration, NaOH uh, uh, dehydration will be there, which is very dangerous and it will cause a uh, air leakage into the particular reactor. When it will be reacted with air means it will cause an explosion reaction. So it will can be exploded. So because of this reason, these two methods are not much feasible, whereas this aniline method is feasible. Then next one is optimization of process variables. Okay, process conditions. In the first reactor, we need to maintain 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. When you cross more than 30 degrees centigrade, what, what will happen? Uh, this uh, hypochloride, sodium hypochloride will be um, degraded. Okay, that will be degraded. Then also next problem is the yield of hydrazine is very sensitive to temperature concentration effects. And also the side reaction E. Okay, side reaction, which is nothing but this one, uh, reaction E, this one, uh, sodium, uh, this ammonium chloride, uh, monochloride, 
okay monochloramine plus hydrazine reaction this needs to be separate uh, suppressed okay we have to suppress this reaction is one uh, challenge there one major engineering problem and next one is using excessive ammonia will give higher yield okay higher yield of hydrazine here using the excessive ammonia will give a excess yield of hydrazine but it will increase the cost of ammonia storage tank as well as the reactor size will be very high so that will add a cost okay reactor size needs to be very high that will add a cost and also optimization of process design variables is also very very difficult okay one thing is in the uh, process design optimization of variable so in the chlorination unit we have to maintain 20 to 30 de degree centigrade why because beyond 30 degree centigrade naocl which is sodium hypochlorite will be degraded and next one is we have to suppress a react uh, side reaction which is uh, this one uh, monochloramine or chloramine will be reacted to hydrazine and it will give a off reaction side reaction okay this one okay which is ammonia chloride will be given this reaction needs to be separated uh, suppressed and and also using the excess amount of nh3 will be advantageous but uh, there should be some maximum limit why because if there is no maximum limit then the cost of hydrogen uh, this ammonia storage as well as reactor sizing will be very very high so that will add upon a cost and next major engineering problem is safety consideration so safety consideration why we have to consider its safety all these are the high energy chemicals all these are nothing but your uh, um, explosives okay high energy chemicals are nothing but an explosives or exothermic reacting molecules so there needs to be safely we have to handle so safety consideration is also very important so in an atmosphere using uh, this uh, nitrogen must be maintained at pressures less than sub atmospheric pressure whenever uh, in any reactor when pressure less than sub atmospheric pressure is required we need to maintain inert atmosphere we need to completely purge okay completely purge the uh, reactor then only we have to load the reactant so n2 gas is obtained from the hydrazine reaction so last reaction whatever i said to you this reaction this reaction needs to be suppressed n2 gives rise to n2 uh, n2h4 gives rise to n2 plus 2h2 which needs to be suppressed and also anhydrous hydrazine okay also the anhydrous hydrazine is shipped under uh, this uh, nitrogen atmosphere whenever the purified product this anhydrous hydrazine we have to ship to the other location we have to ship under the strict conditions of inert atmosphere that is n2 atmosphere conditions so otherwise some inhibitors needs to be added so that it will not react with air if it react with air so it will cause a explosion reaction so that's why it needs to be safely transported from one place to another place using the inert atmosphere or nitrogen atmosphere then next problem is outdoor type construction is used for the better ventilation and also avoiding a leakage of uh, explosion avoiding a leakage of air inside that one so we need to construct a proper ventilation needs to be there otherwise it will cause a leakage of air inside and uh, that leakage will result in a explosion explosion it will result so these are the major engineering problems which are there so once again i am summarizing first major engineering problem is material of construction so since chlorine hydrazine sodium hypochlorite uh, whatever the ammonia products are there nh4 cl and uh, uh, nh uh, cl2 nh2 cl all these are nothing but corrosive products okay Uh, because of this corrosive products this chlorination unit uh, naocl reactor as well as hydrazine reactor needs to be constructed using a high quality stainless steel that is ss304 with rubber lining only we can use that one okay apart from that nh3 recovery unit purification azeotropic distillation or uh, other distillation units can be constructed with a normal steel but that three uh, uh, chlorination unit plus hydrazine the hydrazine reactor as well as naocl reactor needs to be constructed with a high quality stainless steel so that is material of construction then next one is a dehydration method so in dehydration method there are three methods one is aniline uh, extract to distillation using aniline next one is extract to distillation using ethylene glycol then third one is distillation over naoh at low pressures okay sub atmospheric pressure so this sub atmospheric pressure is highly explosive so we cannot go for this one and this ethylene glycol recovery as well as this losses okay which are very high okay heat lo heat losses will be very high heat lo heat requirement is very high that will be adding upon the operating cost 
so we cannot go for this method but the feasible method is aniline method only the feasible method the next one is optimization of process variables so first process variable is 20 to 30 degree centigrade this is uh, we need to optimize otherwise beyond the 30 degree centigrade the sodium uh, hypochlorite will be decomposed okay the, that one is there uh, in the optimization of process variables the next is the safety consideration all these are the explosive molecules only whenever we are transporting that one so we need to ensure a uh, nitrogen atmosphere or the inert gas atmosphere inside that one otherwise a explosion reaction will be taking place there so these are the major engineering problems any doubts Yeah, please respond any doubts no, no sir okay then shall we continue next topic which is borane's production the last topic this is yes sir yes sir okay yeah then next one is the borane's production so what is this borane's so borane's are nothing but by definition boron plus hydrogen compounds are called as a borane's okay there are three types of borane's which are uh, used as a high energy chemicals one is a diborane which is b2h6 and pentaborane which is b5h9 and decaborane which is b10h14 okay why this borane's why uh, what are the uses of this borane's okay uses of this borane's are nothing but as a rocket fuel in supersonic aeroplanes also we can use this as a rocket fuel okay because this is a high energy chemicals the next one is as a catalyst in various polymerization reaction also this borane's can be used as a catalyst and as a reducing agent in various organic reactions this borane's can be used and in the vulcanizing agent for the uh, natural rubber as well as synthetic rubber manufacturing as a vulcanizing agent we can use this borane's and as a coating okay in many coatings this borane's will be used as a pro, uh, as a ingredients okay these are the various uses they are asking in a short answer question what are the uses of borane's or what are the uses of hydrazine okay to manufacture a borane there are various raw materials which are required so that raw materials are methanol one raw material boric acid or metaboric acid we can say then sodium metal itself it is required then hydrogen is required then boron trichloride or boron trichloride okay bf3 or bx3 uh, b uh, cl3 okay is required then glycol ether and mineral oil is also required these are the various raw materials so what are the various reactions which are taking place this one is the reaction and the flow sheet is this one so i will explain you in the one note what are the different uh, reactions which are taking place there this is called borane's production b o r a n e s borane's production borane's are nothing but boron hydrogen compounds are called as a borane's so in this one first if you see this is the reactor so methyl borate reactor this is the first reactor and this is the second reactor sodium hydride reactor okay what is the use of this reactor first we will see so the first reaction which will be taking place is a methanol which is coming from this recycled methanol as well as makeup methanol will be sent to the methyl borate reactor along with a boric acid okay the methanol which is ch3oh will be reacted with a boric acid which is h3bo3 so this is called boric acid and three molecules of methanol will be reacted with one molecule of boric acid so this is called boric acid and this is methanol will be reacted to give trimethyl borate trimethyl borate is b o c h 3 thrice so this is called trimethyl so because three three ch 3s are there tri uh, trimethyl borate plus three molecules of water will be formed so this is the first reaction which is taking place in this reactor methyl borate reactor methanol plus boric acid or metaboric acid will be reacted to form a trimethyl borate in this methyl borate reactor 
then next one is reaction b which is taking place in this reactor 2 so this is one this is two so the b reaction is sodium na this one will be reacted with hydride or hydrogen one molecule of hydride so that will be forming sodium hydride so this is called sodium hydride where this is this will be formed in this reactor 2 sodium hydride reactor so how it will be formed sodium hydride is just prepared in sodium hydride uh, uh, reactor as a dispersion okay as a dispersion of nearly 5 to 25 micron crystals of this na okay micron crystals in inert mineral oil okay that uh, metal will be dissolved in a mineral oil okay mineral oil and it will be sent it will be made it react to na plus hc uh, na plus hydrogen so this na will be dispersed in a mineral oil okay mineral oil then it will be contacted with a hydrogen then this nah which is sodium hydride will be formed in this reactor 2 then this nah plus whatever the trimethyl borate which is formed in this reactor 1 will be sent to this particular third reactor which is sodium borohydrate jacketed reactor so in which outside the jacket a cooling water will be circulated why because this is highly exothermic reaction in order to cool this reactor there will be a cooling water supply inside that particular jacketed reactor so then reactor c will be reaction c will be carried out which is nothing but whatever the nah formed in the reaction b that is nah plus this trimethyl borate which is formed in the reaction a will be reacted with each other that is boch3 thrice which is trimethyl borate will be reacted this will be seven molecules of nah plus trimethyl borate will be reacted together and it will give you a sodium borohydrate na ph4 which is called sodium hydro uh, borohydrate we can say the sodium borohydrate okay along with one, uh, three molecules of sodium uh, we can say uh, six molecules not three i think yeah one molecule has been consumed here so along with a six molecules of na which is sodium metal plus along with three molecules of uh, methanol will be liberated so this is a c reaction which is taking place here in the third reactor here okay sodium borohydrate reactor because this reaction is very exothermic so heat liberation will be very high to suppress that heat liberation or to control this reactor heat we need to circulate with cooling water so after that one a product which is called sodium borohydrate will be formed in this reactor 3 so after forming sodium borohydrate will be taken to this diborane reactor so the n uh, so here a na oil whatever the oil which have been used mineral oil now that will be once again recycled back to the sodium hydrate reactor uh, sodium hydrate reactor then whatever this sodium hydro uh, hydroboride uh, borohydrate which is formed which will be just uh, sent with a glycol ether so glycol ether will be used here in the diborane reactor and it a diborane will be formed this diborane once again will be reacted with px3 so nothing but that is bf3 or bcl3 that is d reaction will be taking place there so d reaction will be three molecules of this sodium borohydrate na bh4 will be reacted with this bf3 or bcl3 so combinedly i can write this as bx3 okay x can be cl or f okay when x is a cl when x is a cl so that is called bcl3 so bcl3 is nothing but boron trichloride if x is a f okay bf3 that is called boron trifluoride boron trifluoride combinedly this uh, cl or f i am writing as a x here for the advantage anything we can use cl or, uh, or f we can use then 
the corresponding uh, product which is formed is a two molecules of this diborane b2 so this is di b2 means diborane b2h6 plus three molecules of your sodium chloride or fluoride chloride or chloride x is nothing but cl or f so chloride or fluoride will be formed along with three molecules of your methanol will be formed so this is called diborane so this is first boron product boron hydrogen product then this is called sodium okay uh, this is called sodium chloride or sodium fluoride if x is chloride cl then this is called sodium chloride if x is f it is called sodium fluoride then this is you know methanol this one so this d will be formed in this reactor 4 okay reaction d okay whatever the sodium borohydride is there that will be coming from this one and it will be reacted with bx3 and this bx3 will be reacted with sodium borohydride and it will be forming you borane diborane if you want this diborane can be used as a product okay this boron hydrogen product or otherwise you can send it to further processing in the pentaborane reactor so why we have to use the pentaborane penta uh, we have to manufacture a pentaborane why because it is more desirable project uh, product in the uh, rocket uh, uh, rocket uh, uh, propulsion industries so because of various advantages of pentaborane so this diborane will be sent once again to the pentaborane reactor in which a reaction a b c d e reaction e will be formed that is whatever this borane which is formed diborane so b2 h6 will be reacted with x molecules of hydrogen so here x molecules of hydrogen will be uh, supplied here so it will be reacted with diborane will be reacted with x molecules of hydrogen and it will be forming a y molecules of pentaborane okay b5 h9 plus z molecules of pentaborane which is h11 okay b5 h11 is also pentaborane b5 h9 is also pentaborane pentaborane 9 we will call this one this is called pentaborane 11 we will call this one okay when diborane is reacted this is diborane is reacted with x molecules of h2 a y molecules of pentaborane 9 will be formed and z molecules of pentaborane 11 will be formed okay that that is taking place in this pentaborane reactor okay it will be uh, supplied with a hydrogen as well as it will be a reactor which is heated reactor okay a heat will be supplied along with this hydrogen then diborane will react with the hydrogen and will form a pentaborane so further if you want a uh, gases product or uh, uh, more desirable product which is de decaborane okay b10 okay decaborane if you want this pentaborane will be sent to this particular uh, penta decaborane reactor or otherwise this liquid pentaborane can be just used as a product okay pentaborane product this is diborane product this is also one product this is also second product if you want further to process this uh, uh, penta uh, pentaborane you can send it to the de decaborane or uh, decaborane reactor so what it will happen in the decaborane reactor so the reaction c d e f okay reaction f so this pentaborane b5 h9 okay two molecules will be just decomposed okay decomposed uh, okay uh, decomposed to this one uh, decaborane b10 h14 b10 h14 plus liberation of two molecules of hydrogen so this is called as a decaborane and this is also called as a pentaborane now reaction g is this b5 h11 will be further decomposed to decaborane that is x molecules of b10 h10 uh, plus y b4 h10 along with the liberation of some z molecules of hydrogen so this is called b10 h10 is called deca hydro decarbonate so deca hydro decarbonate this is will be in this salt form okay deca hydro decarbonate or simply 
we can call this as some ionic borohydrate ionic borohydride cluster we can say or this b4h10 okay b4h10 is nothing but tetraborane tetraborane okay so this reaction will be taking place this f and g reaction will be taking place here okay this will be reactor uh, this is reactor 5 this is reactor 6 then reaction f and g will be taking place here okay first of all i am summarizing once again this reactions and flow sheet so the first reaction which is taking place is methanol will be combined with boric acid or metaboric acid in the methyl borate reactor and it will be forming you a trimethyl borate and this trimethyl borate will be sent to the sodium borate uh, borohydrate jacketed reactor along with the sodium hydride which is formed in the sodium hydride reaction reaction reactor so how this sodium hydride will be formed by reacting sodium metal which is dispersed in the mineral oil plus h2 hydrogen then sodium hydride nah will be formed this sodium hydride along with this trimethyl borate which is formed in this first reactor will be sent to the sodium borohydrate jacketed reactor so this since this is a uh, exothermic reaction okay highly exothermic reaction to control the temperature of this reactor we need to ensure a flow of cooling water inside this one so in this reactor what are the reaction which ha will happen the nah will be reacted with uh, trimethyl borate which is formed in this here so that will gives you a sodium borohydrate so that sodium borohydrate along with liberation of uh, sodium metal and three molecules of your uh, methanol then this sodium borohydrate will be sent and it will be reacted with this glycol glycol ether and this uh, boranes whatever this uh, sodium borohydrate is there that will be reacted with this uh, px3 or boron trifluoride or boron trichloride then a diborane will be formed then if you desire it as a product you can uh, you can uh, take it as a product otherwise if you want more preferable product which is pentaborane you need to send this diborane to the pentaborane reactor in which it will be supplied with a heat as well as hydrogen then hydrogen and diborane will be reacted with each other and it will give you a pentaborane and if you want further a gaseous product or this is pentaborane is a liquid product if you want you can take it outside okay you can, you can uh, send it to the uh, customer or otherwise this liquid product can be converted to the more desirable vaporous product which is pentaborane or decaborane by just decomposing this uh, pentaborane to the decaborane by supplying a heat decomposition reaction then a pentaborane will be uh, decaborane will be formed or deca carbohydro uh, 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 we will say this deca hydro decarbo uh, decarburet salt or simply we can say ionic borohydrate cluster will be formed here okay finally a deca boro uh, borane powder will be stored as a product okay there are three products one is a diborane next one is a pentaborane and third one is a deca borane so these three are the high energy chemicals which are used okay this three are the high energy chemicals diborane pentaborane deca borane okay any doubts here until here so all this reaction i have given here clear sir okay then last is this major engineering problems please excuse me for extended time so uh, what is this one so this is a major engineering problem so uh, major engineering problems which are encountered in manufacture of borins is first one is a toxicity problem this compounds entirely diborins pentaborin decaborin entirely they are very toxic therefore we need to control uh, the emission of this particular borins into the atmosphere the limit the environmental limit set by the government is this one 0.01 to 0.1 ppm only we can release to the environment so if you cross that limit so you will be subjected to scrutinized under uh, the uh, corresponding laws so the permissible limit we have to ensure this permissible limit within the plants uh, the release of toxicity so toxicity is one type of major engineering problem the next one is a reactivity problem so whenever borins are reacted with air or water so they will cause a extreme explosive reaction so we need to take a proper care whenever we are storing or whenever we are processing borins if they are reacting with air and water so they will be exploding so to do to have a proper control of this borins we need to put a reactor under a proper 
barricaders concrete barricaders okay separate building needs to be there with a proper bank uh, concrete barricaders and also whenever you are charging some of the reactants to the reactor we need to completely purge with a inert gas that reactor needs to be purged completely with a inert gas that is this one requires full drying and purging with nitrogen before loading materials so this two are the major engineering problems in this particular manufacturing of borings okay is that okay any doubts clear sir okay then please read okay this is the completion of first unit okay don't take it lightly okay then please try to read then thank you for listening bye then have a nice day